Hello YouTubers, this is Trainman122. Uh, so uh, to start off the next part of the series here of what I'm just going to be calling the Run 8 series. Um, doesn't really have any direction to it or anything like that, but I did get a request from this YouTuber right here whom is asking just for tutorials, some kind of a way to get a professional insight on what entails driving a train in this game, this simulator. It is difficult. I did mention before it is a very difficult control scheme uh, that not a lot of people still fully understand here, but um, I was going to go over a little bit of it here, just uh, the easy stuff, just getting the locomotive started up and uh, getting it to move forward. Now, I want to point out one thing first, simply this. This is the keyboard I will be using. Um, now, I point this out only because not every keyboard has this particular setup. Uh, I'm not talking about the red underlights, ignore that. Uh, basically, these six squares right here is the insert home page up page down end and delete these keys are essential to playing run 8 version 2 as they are the reverser forward backwards train brake apply release and independent brake apply release so these are essential absolutely um, these uh, number pad buttons here, uh, I believe most of them are used, I think zero is the sander for default, plus this plus sign right here is throttle up, and minus up here is throttle down. When you hit the divide key uh, and you your locomotive is in notch zero, it puts it into dynamic braking which then reverses where this is increased dynamic braking and this is decreased dynamic braking as well as I think the bell is default to the period button I have set it to B because it just makes sense and it's right above where the horn is it's, it, it has a home so any case this is the type of setup I'm using here and I do want to make sure that you all know this because I'm going to use these keys. I'm going to mention them all as is, and I don't want anyone getting confused here. So, back to the simulator. Um, I'm actually currently in a populated session uh, full of AI trains, artificial intelligence trains. So we may actually get a couple that pass through here uh, very shortly. In fact, I might... No, there's not one down there yet, but... In any case, I do believe there's going to be an intermodal train and a mixed manifest Santa Fe coming through here. Uh, so maybe you'll be interested in keeping an eye out for those. For starters, I would like to start with the Rio Grande SD40T-2. Um, I've set these particular locomotives up as they are the only major models in the game. Um, the SD40T-2, the SD40-2, SD45-2, and the Jeeps, uh, Jeep, Jeep 30? Jeep, shoot, I don't remember. Uh, in any case, they are, um, relatively similar in startup. I believe the sounds may differ ever so slightly in the, um, startup phasing and everything, but they all start up the same way with the exception of these four in particular. So, these two have a different startup to these two, and they all sound slightly different, and, uh, and they all have different cab setups. Generally, you're not going to see too much of a difference inside the cab of an SD40, as opposed to a Jeep, as opposed to an SD45. They look relatively the same. Don't know if that stays the way for real life here, but uh, sim-wise, we're talking sim-wise. So, to start this one up, 
I unfortunately have to say it's not the most realistic way for this simulator. Uh, in real life, you'd get up onto this catwalk here, you'd open up this door right here, you'd prime it, which there's a little flip switch in there, you prime it, you flip it the other way, starts the locomotive, and then uh, you get back in the locomotive here, you flip all the circuit breakers into the right way, and voila, your locomotive is ready to roll. Uh, as long as you have the into train device on, all the headlights set up properly, and you're hooked up and everything, you get the idea of what I'm going with here. So, assuming all that, this is all we're going with for today. It's just starting it up, flipping all the circuit breakers, and getting it on its way. So, to start this one up, we get the menu here. Do keep in mind that when you click on a locomotive, you become the owner of that locomotive. If I tried to click on this one, I cannot own this locomotive because it is separated. It is not hooked together with this one, and therefore it becomes a separate entity. Now, if this locomotive had been hooked to the back of this one, when I selected this one, I'd be able to select the second unit, whatever it may be here, and it would act as though I owned it. It just so happens to be combined with whatever it's coupled to. So, in order to move to a different locomotive, you have to relinquish your control and go to a different locomotive. As soon as you click on it, you gain ownership. If there was not already an owner to begin with, and if you weren't already selected uh, with another train. Back to the Rio Grande engine is currently stopped. In order to start it in this simulator you have to flip the start button or you can do the what I call cheat buttons. Um, this one will auto start every single locomotive attached to this one. This one will set all the circuit breakers meaning it'll set the engine to run, um, uh, the uh, engine field I believe it's a typical term. Various other parts will be set to forward running. The multiple unit and the dependence uh, DPUs are usually locomotives that are uh, separated by freight cars. So if you see a locomotive at the front and a locomotive at the back, they are wirelessly connected or in rare cases nowadays, but back then, they were manned helpers, meaning there was another crew inside the other locomotive helping out. But in this case, I think they just typically go with the whole uh, wireless thing. And that's what we use nowadays anyway. So, uh, oh, I hear something. There's our Union Pacific down there. He's going to stop for a recrew over there at UP Bakersfield. So, uh, he, we're not going to see him for a little while. But he will be on this track right here. So, just, you know, keep that in mind. You don't walk around on train tracks in real life. I'm only doing it right now because it's a simulator. No one gets hurt. Don't do this. To get inside the locomotive, there's a few different ways you can do it. I'm going to show first this way. This is the easiest way to do it. You get up to the locomotive's ladder here. Push F11 on the keyboard. Now, you will see these little red dots. At least I hope the filming is able to pick them up. There's little red dots just dotting the entire catwalk of the whole locomotive here. Now the close nearby ones, the ones that are very close to me like these two, I think that one might be considered nearby enough. I can just push W on the keyboard. Look at one, push W. There we go. I'm now standing on the line. I can move forward. I can move backward can't move side to side or anything like that. There's no side to side move it. There's forward and backward. Dependent on camera movement apparently. And then I can just look at that one. Boom. I'm over at it. It's just about holding down W. Hold down W. And then to get off, just go back up to this ladder. Look down at it. Hold down W. Oh, come on. Hold down W. There we go. I'm back on the ladder. And then to get off, F12. And we're back on the ground. But to get inside, simple enough, go back up, F11, go here, go there, go here, 
And now from here, it gets a little bit tricky because you have to know where the seats are located. There's two seats here. As of right now, one is uh, currently taken up by the automated conductor that, for whatever reason, the simulator thinks you need. He doesn't do anything. He just sits there and looks like he's being a conductor, but he doesn't help in any way. But you look over in here, and there's no lines in there. There's there's more lines for some other locomotives, but in any case, you, uh, this, this engineer seat should be right about there. So let's give that a try. Right in that area. Right about there. That little red dot right there. It has put me in the secondary seat. Okay. Now look at the engineer seat. F11. There we go. Now we're driving the train. Everything seems to be set up here properly. Uh, for a shutdown locomotive. There's no way to turn it on from in here, I'm afraid. Some other locomotives you will see different, but as of right now, it is not available for EMD units, basically. With the exception of the SD70 ACE. Now, F12 from here puts you back out on the ground, right next to the cab window. Now, say you don't want to go through all that guff to get back in the cab, Control, now that's his left control, left bottom left of my keyboard, F11 at the same time, puts you back in the cab of your controlling unit. Everything seems to be still in order here, but I need to be outside of the locomotive to access that menu you saw earlier. And again, that's the only way to start the train. Now from this menu you'll be able to access multiple things, starting up everything, putting on an end to train device, setting up the air brakes to refill fully without having to wait for it. Uh, the head end power, HEP, is only for Amtrak, well passenger service I should say. That's what generates power for the train cars. DPU setup, which one's the slave, which one's the forward setup. You can weigh down the entire train, uh, set up the headlights, isolation switch, dynamic, dynamic brake cutout, handbrakes, which are right now applied, 90 pounds per square inch for the feed valve. That is standard for freight trains. On passenger service, it'd be 110, and this is where you'd change it. The train signal, the train symbol is, I don't know, DR. Sure. It's now the GRDW. And then right here is how much fuel's left in it. Uh, now there's a setting inside the uh, graphics menu or something like that that lets you decide if you can refuel it only when it's sitting on a refuel pad or if you can refuel it while it's sitting out here in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I have selected that way because sometimes it's hard to get these things onto a refuel pad. Uh, also, when I'm inside the locomotive, I tend to turn off the red dots. They're very distracting because you can see them through everything. So let's just turn that back off. It was nice, but, you know, just turn that off. UP still holding at Bakersfield crew change. And then you push insert. Right? How are the air brakes doing? So the white one is the brake pipe pressure. Seems to be holding at about 90. The red one is the brake cylinder. Currently has nothing in it, which means the brakes are fully released. The main reservoir, it's creeping up there. It's supposed to be at about 140, so we're going to wait for that to fill up. The white one is the equalizing reservoir that usually holds at 90 or rather the equalizing reservoir is close to what your projected air brake is set at what your projected air pressure is at it's kinda hard to explain but basically if you're at 90 pounds per square inch this is going to show 90 uh, if you want to reduce how much is in the air or I'm sorry how much is in the air brake system it'll usually shoot down to where it should be where where you've set it to 
sometimes like 80 and then the rest of the braking system will catch up with it especially the brake cylinders brake cylinders catch up how much air is flowing through the train as of right now none because the main reservoir has filled back up so there's no need for more air sorry I thought there was a train um, and this one's your typical how much power you're putting into it and then how much dynamic braking you're putting into it and if you put it into the red that's bad this causes locomotive damage uh, sometimes if you get really high up there in the amps over here you can break a knuckle coupler going up hills um, that tells me my parking brake is on that's fine we're gonna leave that for a minute PCS open this is typically for when you go into emergency all the air has escaped from your system and all of your brakes have been fully applied as hard as possible 72 pounds of pure pressurized air pushing against your wheels to keep them st uh, still that's usually what that happens wheel slip you apply too much pull and uh, there's a heavy train behind you usually the wheels slip on the steel rails sometimes this will happen with uh, leaves on the tracks rain snow something like that that can easily do it looks like the Union Pacific's gonna grace us with its presence first and uh, you have sand and that usually helps out with the wheel slip there panel lights gauge lights these all work by the way I really do like running with the gauge lights on it helps me see them a lot better uh, engine run generator fuel control fuel pump the beacon unfortunately that doesn't work although there is a beacon up there but once everything's in order you release the parking brake with either the menu by clicking on the locomotive and having it release you can click on the coupler right here and as you see here handbrake applied we can click release to release it Right, we'll let that be for a bit <laughs> um, and let's let's go ahead and release it though with F5 on your keyboard it's now released all I have to do is make sure all the air brakes are released which they are and then apply a little bit of forward movement with the throttle as long as I've set up the circuit breakers correctly I am such silly face today that's fine that's fine this needs to be set to run you usually use auto circuit breaker anyway I see a lot of people do that now we're set to run forward we could totally race this train out of the yard we'd probably win we have more uh, horsepower on them uh, per ton which we're currently hauling nothing but I'm gonna stop it right there oh hello signal it's a nice view and then we get out and by, mind you uh, when I hit F12 I'm gonna spawn inside the train that's next to us but that's okay then we turn it off and relinquish Oh, there's the uh, uh, Santa Fe. Sorry about that. Oh well. Relinquished and turned off. This locomotive will automatically set all handbrakes. It's not going to go anywhere. Unless you, like, you know, tell the AI to drive it, which would be the AI crew right there. Um, they'll take over the locomotive and drive it straight forward until they hit a red signal, a switch that's against it something like that on to the Amtrak 
This one's got a simple doorway. I actually... Does that... No. Let's click on the locomotive, make sure... Oh, yeah, that's my fault. Click. Relinquish. That looks so cool. They're pacing each other just like that. It's really nice. Any case. Uh, does that door open? I don't think it does. But you can come up to this ladder right here, F11. And uh, I wonder, does this one have... This does not have red lines. So part of me does not believe there's any way to get in there by just holding down W. We're just going to hit F11. Puts me in the cab. Without any problems here. Of course, nothing's starting up or anything like that because the uh, air pressure hasn't been... Well, rather, the locomotive hasn't been turned on. Tunnel motors. Gotta love them rear ends, am I right? So, in any case... Huh. Ended at almost the same time. Gotta love that caboose. So, in any case, yep, yeah, this is the interior for this one. This one actually gives you a screen to look at. Let's you, you know, all the information necessary. I can go over all of this, but it's, it's a long list of things that it tells you here. And you switch through all this by going through C, the letter C on the keyboard goes that way, X goes this way, push Z, eh, that button goes down, but uh, Z again, now we're on the other screen, so if you say want that up, as well as you want, you want that up for distributed power, you can totally do that, and because I'm currently controlling this screen, this is how I would set up controlled power um, you know, if I want the locomotives at the back pushing harder than the locomotives at the front, this is how I would do that. There's a special setup for that. That one takes some time to set up, though. A lot of experience. I wouldn't expect any of you, well, most of you anyway, to know how to do that one right off the bat. That one's quite hard. But it's very good for getting up mountains. Right, Chuck? Useless. So anyway... That's just going to do its thing. Ah, yes. And uh, just to uh, point out, I'm not entirely certain if there is a way to start this one without pushing the menu button. I have not found one that's for sure but I'm not entirely certain of how it started in real life either I'm assuming there's a way because you see over here there's a door right there this thing right here is a door that goes into the engine room there's like a little compartment off to the side for the entire engine room part um, as far as I can tell, there's no way to start it up from in here. Yeah, none of these are actually start buttons or anything like that. So there must be a way to start it up from the engine room, of which is inaccessible as of right now. But, you know, it's typical stuff. Simple. The Southern Pacific Jeevos. Now, uh, as I've stated in a previous video, the Jeevos were never uh, with the Southern Pacific Railroad. Southern Pacific was actually gobbled up by Union Pacific uh, before the Jeevos actually came about. God, I love that sound. So, um, they uh, never actually officially had Jeevos. They had AC-44s, and they had Dash-9Ws, but uh, 
Jeevos were not a thing that they had, and the simulator just really, they just didn't have, uh, this was early on, mind you, uh, the original locomotives with version 1 were only Jeevos. The entire simulator consisted of some default train cars and Jeevos, and that was all you had to use. We were actually doing some switching operations with these. It was fun, to say the least, in a weird way. And um, so, it, you know, they they kind of did what they could with what they had, and they didn't apparently have the technology to make AC44s. They didn't have the technology to make Dash 9Ws, even though they're very similar to Jeevos. They just didn't do it. And so they just slapped the Southern Pacific paint scheme onto the Jeevo to make it uh, just a little bit interesting. Um, this was all before the uh, SD40s came out and all that stuff. So it all just kind of happened. There's a lot of detail in here, though. I do love it. Icebox. Yeah. So in any case, let's get back in the seat here. Yeah, don't... You, no. Unable to move to cab view because distance, no player, train control. I am controlling this train. Am I not? I am controlling this train. I don't know what it's talking about. Well, maybe I wasn't. Houston, I've lost control of my mind. Thank you. Okay, so... Let's see. Let's go ahead and set it to start. This is one of the few locomotives. Uh, I should say there's only two in this simulator that you can start without using the menu. And it's this one and the AC40... Uh, <laughs> SD70 ACE. And you just simply set it to start and hit start. You know, I've only uh, just realized how much taller we are than the Amtrak locomotive. It's kind of... Well, I kind of find it strange, considering the engines aren't too different. The only difference is, like, the safety cab design, but that's for other reasons, I'm sure. In any case, uh, same difference here. You flip these up. Uh, these are not fully necessary, but, like, I always love having these lights on. It's always good for me. And uh, brakes are off. They usually are for some reason. You set the reverser to forward. And then, like an idiot, you turn around and set the engine to run. And, uh... Air brakes are still charging. Normally you'd wait for them to fully charge, but I'm just gonna drive. Take off the handbrakes and crawl. Be careful, these suckers can get away from you when they're by themselves. I'm only in notch one and we're already hitting 12, 13. It's, yeah, it's just notch one in only a couple of seconds. We're at 15 miles an hour. We're over speed right now. So you set the train into emergency because you can. Open the back door and get out and we're done with you except that I forgot to turn you off now we're done with you now we go on to the final SD70 ACE I've chosen the Union Pacific one because we are technically on the Union Pacific Bakersfield trackage it only felt natural so as per usual you can do it through here but I have recently found out you can do it from in cab. And uh, I actually want to see here. Can this door open? No. Oh, so, so sad. Oh well. Control F11. And we are in. Let's see. Locomotive troubleshooting flow chart. Does it move? Well, we're not moving yet. No. 
Should it be moving? Well, yeah, I think it's. I don't think a can of WD-40 is going to fix this. I, I think. Uh, I think we should be able to just turn it on, so it's not broken. So here we go. We set this switch right here from start, stop, isolate. Oh no, I'm sorry. That's right where it needs to be. We push one button. It's kind of hidden on this screen. I'll bet you can't even quite tell where it is if it wasn't for the lettering below it. It's right here. That is the start button. And I'm sure in real life it would look a lot better. But, click. Now you may have noticed that you can't hear that very well and that's actually a good thing. Uh, see these particular cabs when they first came out they had some problems with sound and uh, vibration. Uh, the issue was that it was the cab was fused or welded to the frame and there wasn't enough actual shock in the system to keep all the bumps and bruises on the rails from uh, translating to the engineer and conductor seat and uh, also there wasn't very much sound padding either so they heard the engine loud and clear made it very difficult to hear each other talking which is very important to do and also made it very difficult for them to hear afterwards it was ruining their hearing so a bunch of the units actually got called back in to be redone properly and it basically entailed separating the cab off from the rest of the frame. Uh, you'll see it a little bit better in real life, but basically it was separated off. It was cut just like that. And then they filled the area in between with little airbags of cushion. That's what allowed it to separate off from the rest of the locomotive, as well as pad it from sound vibrations. And uh, these are really some of the more quiet locomotives too. But man, when you get these things up to speed, you know what? I'll just, I'll have you listen. Set this engine run, generator field, pump. Uh, I don't believe anything else here is necessary except I believe that's the dynamic brake. It's, is it? Yeah, dynamic brake. DB, dynamic brake. Uh, step lights, cab lights, gauge lights. I love gauge lights. Um, brakes are off, all that stuff, but we're just going to set it to neutral, which it still is. Um, we're going to turn around. We're going to flip the switch like a dummy. There we go. Run. Now it'll do it properly, but I'm going to do it from outside the cabin. And get right up here. See what I mean? These are loud suckers. Especially when you get them really pushing it. And trust me, they are strong. I just, I, you know, when I was younger, I used to be GE only. GE is the only way to go. GE forever. GE is life. No. EMD sold it with this one. I love the design. The little jagged edges. The slants on the nose. Love the sound of the engine when it starts up. Sounds like a buzzsaw straight out of hell. And then that's that just engine sound of it up to speed. It's just 
it's just it is beautiful I mean don't get me wrong GE is still great they still do great locomotives but that right there that's scary it's scary good and uh, well be free I think that about sums everything up for Run 8, getting everything started and uh, up and running. So, I hope you all enjoyed the video. There may be more to come, especially if I can get some more uh, requests or uh, ideas on what people need to know about this simulator. Because it is just, it's, I've said it before, I think this is the greatest simulator I've ever played. And I've played a lot of them. Train's New Era, Train Sim World, Train uh, Simulator, I believe I started on that one when it was uh, Train Simulator 2010, and uh, I recently played 2017, but I don't know. Just nothing ever caught the magic that Run 8's been providing me, especially with the multiplayer. There's no other simulator out there with multiplayer unless you count... Uh, the modified version of Microsoft Train Simulator known as Open Rails. That is definitely an option for those of you out there who have Microsoft Train Simulator and have the time to set that up, but honestly, I just, I prefer this. I have my preferences, you have yours, and that is okay. And um, I just, I can't live without this simulator anymore. Hope you all enjoyed it, and uh, talk to you guys later.